Good morning, dear Fathers, Father and Chaga, Hashlan Bartlia. Justice Lafoy, thank you for the invitation to attend here this afternoon. I am pleased to speak at the inaugural meeting of the Citizens' Assembly. Uh, that I speak on behalf of the government and the houses of the Oireachtas signifies to you and to the people of Ireland that the issues that you will discuss in the, over the coming months are beyond party politics. In fact, they are so clearly beyond party politics. The Oireachtas has voted to give you this mandate. So your report is not to the government. It is to the Oireachtas. And that is a mandate to consider, to assess, to examine matters that are deeply complex, hugely challenging, and profoundly ethical. We chose uh, to go about our business in this way so that as a nation and as a society we could move from a position of contention, even contempt, and find valuable consensus, some common coordinates in a matter so privately and publicly tender. Indeed, even more so when views are held so deep and, as we have seen in the past, so divisive. So your work in addressing and achieving consensus on behalf of us all will affect, and indeed profoundly affect, how we live our individual lives and our national life in the Republic of Ireland in the years to come. Therefore, on behalf of the Oireachtas, I thank each and every one of you for your personal commitment, your civic generosity, and above all, if I may say so, your courage in contributing to this national discussion of such significant import. In a world where anonymity seems to have so much power and so little responsibility, in this assembly, you are not only having your voices heard, but you are putting your head above the parapet. And because you are, I ask the people of Ireland, private and public, official and unofficial, to allow you to undertake this vital work with the necessary dignity and space and freedom that you deserve. We're all aware that one particular aspect of your deliberations, the Eighth Amendment to Bunrath Naheran, has divided our country in the past. Today, the potential of such division is the same. Today, equally, technology can see such public division deteriorate into personal derision. It can happen immediately and almost without limits. Yes, this is the first time that an issue of this significance in this country will be debated in the social media age. Social media puts the assembly within the reach and indeed the sights of those with deeply held views on either side of any debate. Regrettably, we live in a time when opposing view is no longer seen simply as a diverse opinion or a topic worthy of attention and debate. Rather, we live in a time when a diverse opinion has become something or someone to be pitied, to be ridiculed, and indeed virtually hounded on occasion. I would remind all commentators that posts, virtual posts, that might seem devastatingly witty to them might be simply devastating to the people to whom they refer, to the people who receive them, and indeed to their families. The Shannock and Segwelgan, Kasta and Athini Lechela, Akni Kasta and Akunik. Therefore, to people on both sides of a debate, I would say, please take time to reflect before you react. Consider the person that you are and the person that you are addressing. We understand very well the positions on both sides. So I ask everybody to allow the members of the Assembly, you the members of the Assembly, that space and respect to go about your work. As citizens of this Republic, 
let us consider the work of the Assembly and the issues at hand according to the highest standards of our best selves. To do otherwise would be to diminish the Assembly and by extension who we are or wish to be as a respectful, tolerant society that welcomes diversity of opinion and the dignified debate that ensues. The Houses of the Oireachtas have set the Assembly a challenging programme for the coming year. As we all know, Bunrath and Heron is integral to our nation's state. Bunrath and Heron is the beating heart of our legal system and our constitution defines our freedoms and sets our limits. It decides how we live together in this country. It is a living document. It has got undergone numerous amendments by the people since its enactment. One I see Tom down here, who chaired the Constitutional Convention, in which so many people participated, who brought about the first occasion um, globally where a people uh, took the, took the um, Constitution, made recommendations, and followed that by translating it into law in the marriage equality referendum. In recent years, it has addressed the rights of the child, expanded the definition of marriage, as I say, to include same-sex unions. It has to be subject to constant national attention and careful national scrutiny. As a provision of our Constitution, the Eighth Amendment impacts on all of us in society and in every age group. And on this and on all matters related to the Constitution, it is vital that all of us together have a say as to how it functions. This Assembly, you, the people of this Assembly, is the voice of the people at this stage of the process. You will be heard and listened to very carefully. Some people give out to me about having set up a citizens' assembly with government and our office approval, but I've been through some negotiations over the last number of months, as you'll be aware, and people would say, I have to go back and consult with my people. So on an issue as profound as this, isn't it only right and proper that we should consult with the people? And you are, you are a select um, a representative group of the people. So under the able direction of your chairperson, Ms. Justice Lafoy, and with the benefit of the specialist expertise and that she will have available to you and the opportunity to discuss and debate the issue in an environment where all views can be safely expressed and respectfully, uh, respectfully followed through. The Assembly's hearings will be streamed live. Everybody who wishes uh, to will hear the debate and the complexities involved. And because the time frame is short, the Oireachtas has asked the Assembly to deal with the issue of the Eighth Amendment in its first body of work. So I hope that you will be able to set out your views to the Oireachtas, and not the government, in the first half of 2017. And thereafter, the decisions will fall to the elected representatives. We will take your findings, propositions, or conclusions and consider them in detail in a specialist Oireachtas committee. And if the time arises for a vote, people can vote freely in accordance with their conscience. Naturally, the emphasis on the Eighth Amendment should not detract from the remaining issues that the Oireachtas resolution has assigned to the Assembly, which includes focusing on our ageing population, the challenges and the opportunities of uh, climate change already affecting food security, migration, and politics around the globe. So many of the men and women and children who now flee for their lives do so because of the political, social, and demographic effect of drought, displacement, erosion, famine, and war. And even here at home, we can see the beginnings of the effect of increased energy in the atmosphere with the uh, warming Atlantic. Climate change will affect not just how well we live on this planet, Ultimately, we will decide if we manage to exist at all. I'm aware that there are individuals and groups who will have valuable insights and information to offer you in your deliberations on this and on all these matters. 
and I understand arrangements are being put in place to make sure that you have access to them. So your recommendations on all the matters discussed by the Assembly will be of vital interest and assistance to the Oireachtas in assessing its course of action in relation to each, whether that be by way of referendum, amendment legislation or various other policy approaches. So you will inform yourselves, speak for the people, indeed guide the policy makers. So for now in this great hall here in Dublin Castle, I wish you well in what will be a challenging and a complicated task. Just how challenging and complicated is seen by the fact that we inaugurate the Assembly here today on an International Day of Remembrance for Pregnancy Loss and Infant Death. This coincidence, if you like, shows how exquisitely sensitive your work will be. So once again, I want to thank you for all the respect and the dignity uh, and ask that that be afforded to you in this vital and valuable work. Believe me, I will listen very carefully to all that you have to tell us. Good luck with your endeavours in the time ahead. Thank you.